Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala eşrafil enbiyeyi ve mursalin. Muhammedu Resulullah sallallahu aleyhi ve aleyhi ve sahibi ve sellem. Teslimen kathiren kathira. Fama ba'du, my brothers and sisters. <coughs> we are on the story of uh, Musa aleyhisselam and the lessons from the Anbiya aleyhisselam. The stories of Anbiya aleyhisselam, the prophets and the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran. As I mentioned to you, the purpose of all these stories is not just uh, for storytelling, it is not, uh, obviously it's not for entertainment and also it is not even recording of history. That is, it is there, it is the most accurate historical record that you can imagine because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the recorder. But it is not, that is not the purpose of the story. The purpose of the story is only one, which is that we learn the lessons from that story and we apply those lessons in our lives in a way where it results in earning the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing good to ourselves. So when we learn a story, a lesson from the story, uh, it's important to remind ourselves that we are doing ourselves a favor because we are the first and foremost beneficiaries of that lesson and secondly, it also if we live our lives according to that, then we also earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is good for us in dunya wal akhirah. So we are looking at the story of Musa alayhi salam and we came to the point where Musa alayhi salam um, accidentally killed the Egyptian guy. Because the Egyptian guy was fighting with a man of Bani Israel and Musa alayhi salam sided with the man of Bani Israel uh, without checking what the whole thing was about and in an attempt to stop the other man from uh, injuring the man of Bani Israel, Musa alayhi salam, uh, punched him and Musa alayhi salam, alhamdulillah, was a <coughs> very strong person. He was a he was a big man. He was very strong. He was a warrior and he punched him and he probably didn't realize his own strength. The man died. So now we had a problem. We have a problem here. The man is dead. Now Musa al was of course afraid that you know what's going to happen. Uh, Musa al immediately uh, sought the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes for us what happened thereafter. <coughs> where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim فَأَصْبَحَا فِي الْمَدِينَةِ خَائِفًا يَتَرَقَّبُ فَإِذَا الَّذِي اسْتَنْصَرَهُ بِالْأَمْسِ يَسْتَصْرِخُهُ قَالَ لَهُ مُوسَى إِنَّكَ لَغَبِيٌّ مُبِينٌ فَلَمَّا أَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَبْطِشَا بِالَّذِي هُوَ عَدُوٌّ لَهُمَا قَالَ يَا مُوسَى أَتُرِيدُ أَنْ تَقْتُلَنِي كَمَا قَتَلْتَ نَفْسًا بِاللَّمْسِ إِنْ تُرِيدُ إِلَّا أَنْ تَكُونَ جَبَّارًا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا تُرِيدُ أَنْ تَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُسْلِحِينَ وَجَاءَ رَجُلٌ مِنْ أَقْصَى الْمَدِينَةِ يَسْعَى قَالَ يَا مُوسَى إِنَّ الْمَلَأَ يَأْتَمُ يَأْتَمِرُونَ بِكَ لِيَقْتُلُوكَ فَخُرُجْ إِنِّي لَكَ مِنَ النَّاصِحِينَ فَخَرَجَ مِنْهَا خَائِفًا يَتَرَقَّبُ قَالَ رَبِّ نَجِّنِي مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, which means, so he became afraid, Musa alayhi salam, looking about in the city, waiting to see what will be the result of his, uh, of his crime, of killing. When behold, the man who had sought his help the day before, again called for his help. And Musa alayhi salam saw him and he said, this fellow is trouble. Because he is the man who seems to be quarreling with everybody. So Musa salam said to him, Verily, you are a misleader. Then, when he decided to seize the man, who was an enemy to both of them, the man said, O oh Musa, is it your intention to kill me as you killed a man yesterday? Your aim is nothing but to become a tyrant in the land and not to be one of those who do right. 
Now this is uh, Musa Ali Salam was you know going to stop this fellow from doing uh, from fighting. So this is what he says. He calls out. He says, "You killed the man yesterday, and uh, you want to become a, a tyrant." So he is trying to expose Musa Ali Salam. And this is as I said yesterday. This is I mean last class. This is the unfortunately. <coughs> uh, this is the quality of people who have become uh, slavish in their mentality, where slavery has become ingrained in them. Uh, so they become completely selfish, and they have no feeling for their own brothers and sisters, uh, and therefore they become very easy to divide and rule. and uh, they become very easy to oppress and that's not because the oppressors are particularly clever but because this is what um, uh, this is what um, uh, this is what they have done to themselves so the man said uh, you know he wanted to expose musa alai salam and then he said when when musa alai salam uh, tried to stop him or, or catch him he said oh musa is it your intention to kill me as you killed a man yesterday your aim is nothing but to become a tyrant in the land and not to be one of those who do right among the muslimin so he is accusing musa alai salam uh, even though whatever happened happened because musa alai salam helped this guy then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and then there came a man <coughs> running from the farthest end of the city and he said oh musa verily the chiefs are taking counsel they are consulting together about you and they want to kill you so escape run away get away from this from this place truly i am to you of those who give sincere advice he said i uh, i'm trying to help you uh, so run from here because this is what is happening uh, with the chiefs in the palace so musa alai salam escaped from there looking about in a state of fear obviously he was afraid he would be caught and he made dua and he said my rab save me from the people who are zalimun who are the oppressors now this killing obviously because of the uh, politics of the time the egyptians the coptics were the superior they were the master race and uh, the bani israel they were the slaves of the coptics now, even though musa alai salam was raised in the palace as a prince and so on and so forth the fact remained that he was not of the within court the right race right today to do this day we see this the, the the problem of color in societies where there is discrimination uh, you always see the problem of color where there is a uh, superior color there is a superior color of the superior race and there is a color of the inferior race sometimes it is religion sometimes it is some other uh you know uh, ethnicity uh, sometimes it is some other way of uh, of discriminating between people and of course islam is completely islam prohibits all forms of discrimination uh, between people for any reason whatsoever and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in akramakum in the allah yatqakum allah said the only superior person the most honored of you is the one who has the most taqwa on the basis of piety only the most honored is not the arab or the white man or the black man or the uh, asian or whoever uh, on any of those basis honor before allah subhanahu wa taala is not on the basis of ethnicity or color of the skin or uh, color of the hair or uh, you know shape of the nose or whatever uh, uh, honor is only on the basis of piety of obedience to allah subhanahu wa taala so but in the in egypt at the time so even though musa alaihi salam was a prince uh all of the, and people honored him obviously he had status and what on but when it came now to you know as they say when push comes to shove uh when it came to this point and they said no 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 whatever it is he is he killed an egyptian he killed an egyptian uh he didn't he, and he is uh, from the bani israel so we have to kill him they, we have to take revenge now um this became a big political issue uh that an egyptian was killed or had been killed by a man of bani israel no matter who the man of bani israel was big issue uh pharaoh and his council they met to discuss and uh, the issue was so big there was no alternative but they 
passed uh, a sentence of death on Musa alayhi salam. He said the Musa alayhi salam must be captured and killed. At that time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this man, and there are always good people everywhere, uh, this man came running uh, from the other end of town. Now from the tone, Allah did not mention who the man was, but from the tone of this it appears maybe he was an Egyptian, but he was a good person, he was a you know just person. So Allah and Allah knows best, uh, you know, who he was. But he came running from the other end of the town and told Musa alayhi salam what was happening in the palace and he told him to save himself. So Musa alayhi salam left Egypt and started walking and he went eastward. And imagine just Musa alayhi salam just, just walked. I mean, no provision, nothing, uh, because he was afraid. I mean, if he, if he went home, what is home? Home is, home is the palace. And uh, obviously he can't go there. So where else will he go? Uh, so he just wanted to get away. So he... Uh, left and he walked and walked. Rasulullah said he walked until his shoes wore out. And he had nothing to eat, so eventually he was eating the leaves of trees. I mean, that was the state of Musa. A.s. Eventually, he came to this uh, place called Madian, uh, where there were some wells and water. It was an oasis, there was wells and water. And there, when he went to this place, when he got to the water, he saw that there were some, must have been towards the evening uh, when uh, the shepherds come back from their grazing and they were watering their flocks. They were giving water to their animals to drink. And uh, these men were quarreling and their flocks, their sheep and camels and whatever it was, was all over the place. Uh, and they were watering their camels. And Musa alayhi salam saw there were two women uh, standing to one side uh, with their... Um, with their flock of uh, sheep or whatever it was and they were unable to water their uh, sheep because the men would not allow them to do it. I mean, these men were fighting there and they, uh, you know, they were arguing and so on. So these poor women, uh, they were sh sort of neglected, shoved off to one side and uh, they couldn't do anything. So they were there. Now, Musa a.s. was exhausted. Uh, obviously, he was exhausted. His feet were sore. He was hungry. Uh, but it was his nature that he just could not stand by and watch injustice happen. Right? Even the, in Egypt also, Musa a.s. got himself into trouble because he tried to intervene in the fight. Now, it so happened that the other guy died. Musa a.s. wasn't trying to kill anybody. But the fact is that Musa a.s. could have just walked away and said, you know, this is your, your problem, it's not my problem. And nothing would have happened. But that was not his nature. And this is the one of the, one of the big lessons we need to learn. That is that in... The, the nature to um, stand up against injustice, this is among the best of the qualities of the Ambiya. And that is why we have the hadith of Abu Sayyid al-Khudri, the famous hadith of Rasulullah where he said, if you see anything wrong happening, right? Abu Sayyid al said, if you see anything wrong happening, stop it with your hand. Take action, do whatever it takes to stop injustice. And then he said, if you are unable to do that, if you are weak in the land, if you are unable to do that, he said, speak out against it. Stop it with your tongue. Speak out against it. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and if you are unable even to do that, then he said, hate it in your heart and leave the place. Do not stand there. Do not watch it. Do not participate in it, obviously. Do not support it, obviously. Right? Don't even stand there and watch. Just get out of there. Hate it in your heart. And Rasulullah then went on to add, he said, this last one, which is you are not stopping the thing, you are not stopping the injustice with your hand, which means you are not taking any action. You are also not speaking out against the injustice. You hate it, but you hate it in your heart and you are going away. Rasulullah said, this last one is a sign of dhawful iman. It is a sign of the weakness of your faith. Meaning, if your faith had been strong, you would have stopped the injustice. You would have spoken out against the injustice. Just think about this, my brothers and sisters, on a side note. Think about how many injustices happen in our society. Where, and may Allah protect us and forgive us, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from ourselves. Where not only do we not stop it, not only do we not speak out against it, we... Do, we don't even move away. We actually participate in it. Think about how many ostentatious weddings with all kinds of haram 
practices happen where we participate. And we always have an excuse, oh, but you know, this is a wedding of a dear relative, a new per- and, and a close person to me, what not, what not. Who is more or who should be closer to you than Allah? Who should be closer to you than Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? So if here is a person who you think is close to you, but that person is violating the law of the one who should be the closest to you, who do you side with? Who do you need in your grave? Who do you need on the day of judgment? Who can, even, even whether you need or not, who can help you? We need to think about these things. So and that's the purpose. When you are talking about these uh, incidents of the Ambiya Alayhi Wasallam, you must see what people did. So here is Musa Alayhi Salam now. He has just come from Egypt. He is exhausted. His feet are sore. His shoes are worn out. He is hungry. We don't even know how many days he hasn't eaten for. And when he comes here, he is watching this. He sees this injustice. The two women are standing there. And uh, they are, uh, uh, you know, uh, they seem to be uh, oppressed because they are not being allowed to water their flocks. So what does Musa does he simply do? Does he think to himself, well, you know what, this is not even my land. I am nobody here. I mean, why must I interfere? Whatever is happening, let it happen. Uh, you know, or if he wants a drink of water, well, let me go get my drink of water. Uh, these women, I don't even know who these women are. I mean, why, why should I bother about No, no. Musa alayhi salam went to the women. He asked them, what is the matter? He said, how come you are just standing here and nothing is happening and you know, you need something and what is happening? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَمَّا تَوَجَّهَا تِلْقَاءَ مَدْيَنَا قَالَ عَسَى رَبِّي أَنْ يَهْدِيَنِي سَوَاءَ السَّبِيلِ وَلَمَّا وَرَدَا مَا مَدْيَنَا وَجَدَا عَلَيْهَا أُمَّةً مِنَ النَّاسِ يَسْقُونَ وَوَجَدَا مِن دُونِهِمُ مُرَأَتَيْنِ تَذُودَانِ قَالَ مَا خَطُبُكُمَا قَالَتَا لَا نَسْقِي حَتَّى يُصْدِرَا رِعَاءَ وَأَبُونَا شَيْخٌ كَبِيرٌ And Allah said and when he went towards the land of Madian he said, it may be that my Rabb will guide me to the right way. So he doesn't have a map. He, you know, he's not, uh, he ha- doesn't have a map. He's just walking. He doesn't know where this, is there a road even? I don't know. And where does this lead? What is on the other end? He doesn't know. So he makes dua. He says, Ya Allah, guide me to the right way. And Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided him. And then Allah says, and when he arrived at the water of Madian, he found there a group of men watering their flocks. And besides them, he found two women who were keeping back on one side. And so he went to them. He said, what is the matter with you? They said, we cannot water our flocks until the shepherds take their flocks. And our father is a very old man. So these women are telling them, telling Musa alayhi salam. He asked them, what, what's the problem? So Musa alayhi salam. So they said, look, I mean, we are just two women. These men are watering their flocks and they won't let us do it. And we have no... Support. I mean, the only man we have in our house is our father, and he's a Shaykh Un Kabir, he's an old man. So obviously, he can't come here and, and do all of this. So we are helpless. So Musa alayhi salam went in there and he moved those people apart. And you know, imagine here Musa alayhi salam is alone, but you know, this is the command, this is the this is the warrior speaking. This is the prince of Egypt speaking. So you know, there is a there is a there is an aura about Musa alayhi salam, and of course, this is the man who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had chosen for his Nabi. So this is the aura of the, uh, even though until this time he has not been, uh, you know, called to Nubuwat, but uh, this, this is Allah's qadr for him. So Alhamdulillah, Musa alayhi salam has that presence, he has that uh, haiba, right? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi said this about himself, uh, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has cast uh, my haibat in the hearts of my enemies for a distance of one month. That's it from Medina, one month of journey. Uh, if anybody hears about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he's not inclined towards him, he's not a friend, then he feels a fear in his heart. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gave that presence, he gave that, that command, he gave that confidence to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So those who loved him, they loved him, they found him to be the softest and the uh, most beautiful of human beings, but those who hated him, they feared him because of the haiba that they 
that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had uh, bestowed upon him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Musa alayhi wa sallam then helped them and he watered their animals and they went on their way and then Musa alayhi wa sallam lay down in the shade to rest and then he made a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَزَقَالَهُمَا ثُمَّا تَوَلَّا إِلَىٰ إِلَىٰ الظِّلِّ فَقَالَ رَبِّي إِنِّي لِمَا أَنزَلْتَ إِلَيَّ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَقِيرٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, so he watered their flocks for them. Then he turned back into the shade and he said, My Rabb, truly I am in need of whatever good that you bestow on me. Now, Musa is, you know, he's got nothing. Absolutely, he doesn't literally like a shirt on the back kind of situation. He's got no money, he's got no resources. He doesn't even have shoes, he's got no food, nothing. Uh, he's totally destitute. And on top of all that, he's in a strange land. Uh, he knows nobody there. He's got no relatives, uh, you know, no network, nothing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَسَقَالَ huma After he uh, watered their, flo- their flocks, ثُمَّ تَوَلَّا إِلَى الظِّلِّ And then he turned back to the shade. He, uh, he rested there. فَقَالَ And made dua and said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, رَبِّ إِنِّي لِمَا أَنزَلْتَ إِلَيَّ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَقِيرٍ And he said, O oh my Rabb, truly I am in need of whatever good that you bestow on me. فَجَاءَتُهُ إِحْدَاهُمَا تَمْشِي عَلَى اسْتِحْيَاءِ قَالَتْ إِنَّا أَبِي يَدْعُوكَ لِيَجْزِيَكَ أَجْرَ مَا سَقَيْتَ لَنَا فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُ وَقَصَّ عَلَيْهِ الْقَصَصَ قَالَ لَا تَخَفْ نَجَوْتَ مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ And then, this is the qadr of Allah, there came to him one of the two women walking shyly. So these two women were taken their flocks, they went home. Then one of them, she came back and she was alone. She came back and she said, and she was walking, Allah, Allah is describing how she was walking. So she came walking shyly and she said, Verily, my father is calling you that he may reward you for having watered our flocks for us. So when, they, so then she, uh, Musa a.s. went with her. And uh, the ulama have said that, you know, Musa a.s. walked in front, she walked behind him and she was directing him. Musa, Musa a.s. didn't want her to walk in front so that, you know, he, he didn't have to look at her uh, because she was not mahram to him. So he told her, you walk behind me and direct me. And of course, Allah knows best uh, all the details of that. But the fact is here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he went there. So when he came to him, meaning when he came to the father of this uh, young lady, um, he uh, and narrated the story. So when he came there, obviously, you know, they had a conversation. Who are you? What are you? Where are you? How did you come here? And so on and so forth. So Musa alayhi salam told him all the uh, the whole story of uh, all that happened. And when his father, when this uh, uh, person, the father of the of the young lady, when he heard all that, he said, don't fear. You have escaped from the people who are the Zalimun. He said, you are safe here. Now there is nothing for you to fear. So Musa alayhi salam, uh, and some, some of the Mufassirin, they say that this person was Shuaib alayhi salam. So this was, uh, and Allah knows best, Allah did not name him in the, in the Quran. Uh, but some of the Mufassirin, they have said that this, is, this was Shuaib alayhi salam. So when he, uh, say, when he um, heard the whole story, he said, you are safe, alhamdulillah, uh, from the oppressors. Now, then this woman who had come <coughs> to call him, so these were two sisters and uh, this was, uh, the Mufassirin have said that this was the elder of them and of course Allah knows best. She then said to her father, قَالَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا يَا أَبَتِي إِسْتَأْجِرْهُ إِنَّا خَيْرَ مَنِ اسْتَأْجَرْتَ الْقَوِيُّ الْأَمِينَ She said to the father, she said, oh my father, hire him, right, verily, the best of men for you to hire is the strong and trustworthy. Because these women, I mean, they were alone, father was old. So he said, why don't you hire this man? You know, he can help us and he can uh, graze our flocks and so on. And surely the man is uh, trustworthy and he's strong. So this is the best kind of person for you to uh, hire. So this is the advice she gave to the father. Uh, 
قال إني أريد أن أنكحك إحدى ابنتي هاتين على أن تأجرني ثمانية حجج فإن أتممت عشرا فمن عندك وما أريد أن أشق عليك فتجدني إن شاء الله من الصالحين قال ذلك بيني وبينك أيما الأجلين قضيت فلا عدوان علي Wallahu ala ma naqulu wakil. So he said, that is, this, uh, uh, the, the father of the, of the two uh, daughters, and uh, Allah knows best, but that was perhaps Shreb alayhi salam. So he said, I intend to wed one of these two daughters of mine to you, on condition that you serve me for eight years, but if you complete ten years, it will be a favor on me from you, but I do not intend to place you under a difficulty. If Allah wills, you will find me one of the righteous. So here he is saying, not only hire the person, he said, I will give my daughter to you in uh, as your wife. I will wed my daughter to you uh, on the condition. So this is like the meher for the daughter. And the condition is you work for me for eight years. And if you complete 10 years, that is good. It is a favor. Uh, those two years will be a favor of you, uh, your favor on me. But I am. I will not hold you to that. So eight years is, it's like a meher. Uh, the word meher is not used here, but I'm saying that's what it, uh, that's what it amounts to. And he says, if, and he says, inshallah, I will be, uh, you will find me to be righteous, so I will not oppress you and so on and so forth. You will find me. Obviously, he is a Nabi of Allah, inshallah, Allah alam, and so he is a righteous person. Now, Musa alayhi salam said, that is settled between me and you. Whichever of the two terms I fulfill, there will be no injustice to me. And Allah is the surety over what we say. So now here, you also see Musa alayhi salam is wise. He is not saying, he is not going out of his way and saying, no, no, I will do ten. He's, he said, I accept your condition, which is eight years. I wed your daughter, eight years. And if I should do ten, alhamdulillah, this is min Allah ta'ala. And Allah is the witness for both of us. And also you will find, you said you are righteous, a righteous person. And I will find you righteous, inshallah, that is true. Um, and you will also find that I am a righteous person. Uh, and you will find that I will not do any injustice uh, to you. Now, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, asked, uh, and, and then Musa alayhi wa sallam said, Allah is the surety. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the witness over this. Wallahu ala ma naqulu wakil. Allah is the witness over what we are saying. Uh, he is the witness, of, because that is the agreement between the two of them. Allah is the witness. Now, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked Jibreel alayhi wa sallam, which of the two terms Musa alayhi wa sallam worked? You know, because he said he will work for eight. I mean, he, the, the condition was eight and he said he will, uh, he might work for, for and, and Shaykh Salam said, if you complete ten, then this is a favor on me. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked Jibreel Alayhi Salam, he said, which of the two did he work for eight years or ten years? And Jibreel Alayhi Salam said that he completed ten years and he did Ihsan. So Alhamdulillah, this is also another lesson we learn from the stories of the Anbiya Alayhi Salam, that the Anbiya Alayhi Salam always did Ihsan. They did more than what was even agreed upon, right? Not only just expected, because sometimes there are things which are expected, uh, but they are not necessarily agreed upon, right? So if you you might have a, a deal and then you say, well, you know, um, this person did not give me, so, well, but that's expected, that's the norm, this is the culture. You say, no, no, that may be, but was it something the person had agreed to do? We say, well, you know, if there was no agreement, we didn't have that agreement, we didn't say that specifically. But this is the usual thing, uh, this is the normal thing. We say, maybe normal, but there's no agreement. Here, there was actually an agreement. Despite that, Musa alayhi salam did more. So, Jibreel alayhi salam said he did Ihsan. So, as far as the Anbiya alayhi salam is concerned, are concerned, and as far as good behavior is concerned, good behavior is to do the best that you can do. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said this very specifically, uh, especially for trade. And trade means it's not only, this is not restricted only to buying and selling. This is our dealing with people. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, give more. And he said, when you are weighing, he said, weigh more, give more. So if you are weighing uh, 10 kilograms, then give 10 kilograms. 
and then put a handful more. He said, give more when you are, give it, give to the customer. Now think about this. To if you have, if you are charging for 10 kilograms, then to give 10 kilograms is haq. Alhamdulillah, if you give 10 kilograms, not one gram more, you are not doing any injustice. You are absolutely perfectly just. But Rasulullah what is he saying? He said, no, do that. Obviously, that's given. You, you cannot do injustice, but give something more. Now think about this also from a, we do this because this is the, Hidayat of the Nabi alayhi salam and we follow his Hidayat. But think of it also purely from a worldly sense, right? What kind of customer service is that and what kind of customer relationship will you build if you do what in customer service parlance we call delight the customer, right? Customer delight is not just customer satisfaction, it's customer delight. It's something that you completely unexpected, right? It's something that you do not expect, but this happens. That is customer delight. I remember, uh, there are many such stories, but I'll tell you one. Um, I remember I was in Singapore and I had gone there to teach a course for uh, GE Asia. So I landed there. Um, it was, uh, you know, I landed in the afternoon. I uh, took a nap in the evening. I decided to go for a, a round of Singapore. Uh, so I walked out of my hotel, I was standing on the curb, a taxi comes. So this is a Singaporean Chinese driver. He comes, stops the cab, um, gets out, comes around to the back, opens the back door and says, sir, please have a seat. So now I'm sitting, he's a taxi driver, right? Um, I've been in taxis in many countries in the world. Uh, now I'm absolutely astonished. I said, when was the last time that a taxi driver actually stops the taxi, comes out, opens the door and says, please have a seat. Never happened in my life. So anyway, I got into the car. Then he tells me, sir, uh, in the in the pouch behind the front seat, he says, uh, that is today's newspaper. And he says, there is some water there. Uh, if you would like to have a, a drink of water, this is a sealed uh, water bottle. He shuts the door. He comes and sits down in the uh, in his seat in the driver's seat and he says, sir, where can I take you? Where can I go? So I told him, I don't want to go anywhere. I just want to sit in this taxi and feel this beautiful service that you are giving me. I said, I've never ever in my life imagined that this is the kind of courtesy that I expect from a taxi driver. Now, this is a question of customer delight, right? Because I would have been perfectly happy to get into the car on my own and I would have sat there and the, the driver says, where can I take you? I would have told him, he would have taken me, I would have paid him. That is what is my expectation. This would be perfectly fine. If a, if a taxi driver does that, he is fulfilling his job, he's doing his job well, nothing else. But here was a man who was going over and above the call of duty. He wasn't doing it to me because I was some great person that he recognized. I am an ordinary, I am just a normal, you know, uh, garden variety human being. A normal cab fare for him who happens to be standing on the curbside, but the way he treats. He comes out, he opens the door, he's very courteous, he's giving me value added service, he's showing me, and the car was beautifully clean, it was it had a nice aroma inside, it wasn't smelling bad. And then he's showing me here's the newspaper, here's some water if you like to where we like. Now this is the issue of customer delight. And this is the issue of ihsan. So what the man did was not only adil, it was ihsan. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned this for us. Yeah? Allah said, Ya Ayu Alladina Amanu. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna Allah ya muru bil adli wal ihsan. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered you to do adil, justice, wal ihsan. And in addition to that, excellence. This was the thing of the Anbiya alayhi salam. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us the story of the, or the history of Musa alayhi salam before prophethood so that we understand how Musa alayhi salam was trained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put him through different experiences because Musa alayhi salam would need that experience in his da'wah. And he needed to understand that society from the inside. Now, this is also like uh, Yusuf alayhi salam, who also had first-hand knowledge of the way that that society worked. Musa alayhi salam, uh, Yusuf alayhi salam also, he's, he's, he saw them from the inside. You know, he was 
uh, thrown into the into the well then he was taken he was sold as a slave then he lived in the palace of the aziz and all of that happened then he went to jail and so on and so forth he knew the whole thing from inside he was exposed to all levels of the society from the palace of the aziz to the prison from before that on the slave block right now musa alaihi salam also uh, he is born in the with the bani israel then he is he grows up in the palace of uh, firaun but he ha- he is in touch with his family so he is seeing the bani israel from inside he is growing up in the palace of firaun so he is seeing the pharaoh and the egyptians from inside he knows them and then allah subhanahu wa taala gives him different experiences where now he is uh, from being a, a royal prince and not wanting for anything having absolutely excess of everything suddenly literally overnight musa alaihi salam is reduced to a state of penury to a state of complete destitution where he doesn't even have shoes on his feet he's eating leaves he's starving right and then allah subhanahu wa taala helps him allah gives him gives him a wife allah gives him a, a regular job and allah subhanahu wa taala puts him under the tutelage and the teaching of another nabi shuaib alaihi salam inshallah as i told you that uh, that name has not been mentioned in the quran but we know this from the uh, ahadith from musa salam inshallah this is correct now Uh, then his job what was his job with uh, um with Shur- which river is salam is to be a shepherd of sheep now this is a uh, this is a wonderful thing the that uh, we know uh, about the anbiya alaihi salam that every nabi was a shepherd of sheep right the um, it's very interesting and why would that happen including rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Isa alayhi salam was a shepherd of sheep Musa alayhi salam was a shepherd of sheep uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam also was a shepherd of sheep right in, in his in his uh, youth and his childhood he used to take care of flocks of sheep now why why is that and why is that important because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is training his anbiya he's training his nabi in this case Musa alayhi salam but also the other anbiya so Allah wants to teach them some lessons which become uh, v- valuable for them when they start their real job which is that of dawa In, uh, with uh, with their people now that's because sheep are the weakest of our livestock right um nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that uh, he said a, a person who is a shepherd of he said he said the shepherds of camels are arrogant right and he said riding a horse gives you arrogance and the shepherd of shepherds of sheep are humble now you have to be arrogant because a camel is an arrogant animal it's big it is aggressive and it is uh, very powerful far more powerful than a human being a camel can easily kill a, a kill a human being so when a shepherd is uh, shepherding camels the shepherd has to meet the arrogance of the camel with arrogance so he has to take a stick and hammer him and he has to hammer him very hard because the camel won't even feel it right if you just tap him or something won't even feel it so the shepherd has to be aggressive the shepherd has to be violent the shepherd has to be very arrogant because he is dealing with an arrogant creature but with the sheep if a shepherd takes a stick and hits the sheep the sheep is dead okay the sheep is the sheep are weak the shepherd therefore has to be extremely alert to protect his sheep also sheep run away everywhere right they they are completely directionless they will go anywhere they in in grazing or what not and then they get lost so the shepherd can't afford to be forgetful he can't afford to ignore them he can't just you know go and lie down under a tree and go to sleep and then next thing he knows all the sheep are gone finally uh, sheep as i mentioned earlier sheep cannot uh, bear uh, severe punishment so if you hit the sheep hard the sheep will die so they cannot uh, so the shepherd even no matter how uh angry the shepherd might be the shepherd cannot afford to uh, cannot afford to um uh, cannot afford to do something to the sheep uh, where uh, you know they they die right so he can't be angry with them he cannot express his anger uh, on the sheep because the sheep will die so this is the the other uh, thing as far as the shepherd is concerned so the shepherd has to be patient no matter how irritated he is the shepherd cannot beat up the sheep because the sh- then then you uh, the sheep is dead now 
If you take all of this, you see how much of this is applicable in the area of Dawatul Islam, in the area of teaching, because this is how people are. People are irritating, people are mannerless, people are uh, ungrateful, uh, people push you, try to push you around, uh, people do all kinds of things. And if you lose your temper, if you get angry, if you, uh, you know, you break those boundaries, then you are only causing damage to your job. Inshallah, we'll talk more about this in our next class. The lessons that we learn from the, uh, from the shepherd, from being shepherds of sheep. Uh, this is one of the things that I advocate that in our schools, we must actually have this create this environment of, of shepherds of sheep because there's a huge amount of leadership lessons to be learned from uh, being shepherds of sheep. Wa sallallahu ala nabil kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bi rahmatika ya rahman rahimin. Wa salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.